Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Wall Street Apes guys posted this, how bad are things Wall Street market makers are selling unlimited counterfeit shares, and they are openly telling you that they are doing it. Now, he posted a clip here of uh, Doug Sifu, or Saifu, the Virtue Financial CEO. And I mean, it's remarkable what he is stating here. He's essentially saying, uh, you know, if, if we only have 200 shares, we will sell them 1,000. Essentially, unlimited counterfeit shares, unlimited fraud, unlimited share price drops equals unlimited losses for retail investors. I guess just kind of painting a picture of where the general economy is going, guys, and how the SEC is not protecting us at all. To what we call size improvement, and we've been very upfront and very transparent about providing that level of data. So what that means is in the 8,000 names, to the extent there's not liquidity on a, on a lit exchange, fundamentally the wholesalers are providing infinite liquidity at the NBBO or the inside price. So if we get an order for 1,000 shares in Reg NMS stock that no one's ever heard of, yeah. and there's 200 shares on NASDAQ in New York, we fill out 1,000 shares at that inside price. That's meaningful liquidity. 55% yeah. of the orders that we received, Bob, we provide size improvement. In a complete, you know, as he calls it, an auction environment, who's gonna provide yeah. that? The, so the, the liquidity fairy? Oh, gee. I can't even stomach the fact that these guys are admitting it. Wall Street Apes goes on to say, you know, this has led to devastating losses for investors in stocks like AMC and GameStop, where literally billions of shares have been counterfeited, wiping out hundreds of billions of dollars from investor portfolios. Uh, Ken Griffin is uh, not speaking here, but he is by far one of the worst offenders. So guys, you know, this is uh, more symptomatic. I mean, this doesn't have to do with crypto per se, but you know, these are the same organizations that are now looking to uh, looking to regulate crypto in the US. Adam Cochran here posting this. So the SEC thinks it's safe for you to buy a 2X leveraged SME futures ETF, but that spot Bitcoin is too risky. So, you know, essentially doing the thing or regulating the thing that doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, a spot Bitcoin ETF would just follow Bitcoin price. And so, you know, they've been very apprehensive about regulating that, about allowing retail investors to be trading that. However, 2x leverage CME, you know, essentially saying, okay, you can borrow money. It's a leverage CME futures ETF. And, you know, in a lot of people's eyes, that would look a lot more risky than the spot Bitcoin ETF. So things that make you go, hmm, Mark Phillips here saying, you know, probably just cover for them to approve the BlackRock application so it doesn't look like they are playing favorites. I think it's more along those lines. I think, you know, they have the um, the entities that they want to regulate, the companies that back them, the companies that they are in cozy with. And so, um, you know, they're just waiting for those banks, those financial institutions to step up and offer their products. Guys, this is so shady. And I mean, you know, just taking a look at the crypto market now, it really hasn't moved uh, too much based on any of this. Bitcoin is still, uh, you know, trading sideways. It's up a little bit today. This is Bitcoin on the hourly. You can see uh, just over the last hour, we did see it move a little bit, but essentially still kind of just chopping sideways here. We really haven't seen too much Bitcoin momentum. Uh, as of late, price for Bitcoin right now is uh, trading roughly at $30,600 per coin. Let's bring up XRP here real quickly. XRP is still trading in that $0.48, $0.49 cent range. Right now it is trading at just about $0.48. Cents. So we've got XRP up here uh, on the hourly layer. Let me throw it on the daily so you guys can see that. I'm gonna remove some of that stuff. Uh, not too much really to write home about with regards to XRP, guys. Still just kind of poised and, uh, you know, waiting to rally. Similar to what we saw back in 2020 when we formed this Nike swoosh pattern uh, before we finally shot up with the bull market. Of course, there was the SEC lawsuit in here, which caused the bears to take over. However, we did rebound and we did make a high of about $2 in that bull run. Well, guys, we're seeing the same kind of pattern playing out here. And we've seen it time and time again, that Nike swoosh pattern. So I'm hoping you guys are locked into your XRP positions. Uh, and I'm hoping you did it in and around here and in and around here. Although, you know, when people ask me, you know, in my real life, should I be getting into crypto now? And I'd say, well... Now is probably the second best time to get into crypto. The best time would have been, uh, you know, late November and December of 2022. Uh, you know, when we take a look at the total market cap here, guys. So this is the total chart, the entire crypto market. Uh, you know, when the market did bottom down and around here after that FTX collapse, guys, that's when it was at its lowest. And, uh, you know, for most cryptocurrencies, that was the best time to get into your position. So I always say, you know, well, now's the second best time to get in. But, you know, I think the market's just going to go up from here. I don't really think we're going to see too many more crashes. However, 
If we do, I plan to cost average down some of my crypto positions, and I talk about some of those levels with my patrons on my Patreon at patreon.com slash working money channel. Um, but market guys, right now, looking fairly good, looking fairly robust, uh, since I've got the total market cap up here. Just going to take a look at uh, how that is looking on the daily. You guys can see forming what is looking like a uh, bullish pendant pattern. I guess we'll see how long it takes for that to play out. But yeah, a lot of chatter, a lot of murmurings with regards to Bitcoin ETF filings. This one from Meltem Demirers here. Uh, last week, BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF filing was big news, but it's not the only story. Many of the largest financial institutions in the US are actively working to provide access to Bitcoin and more. So 2023, mid 2023, guys, it's looking as though these companies are filing. And uh, is it of any surprise to you that the small guys could not get in sooner, even though, uh, you know, companies whose whose was it? Um, Caitlin Long's company. I know Caitlin Long has been very vocal on Twitter about it. Why is it that, you know, we're filing these Bitcoin ETFs and you guys keep rejecting, 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 rejecting. Meanwhile, you know, you fast forward to almost July 2023 and we've got BlackRock, Fidelity, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, Investco and Bank of America here uh, all proposing Bitcoin products. Uh, so, you know, the landscape is going to look very, very different in the coming years. Now, not only that, guys, we've got macroeconomic factors, too, that is likely going to affect this. Jim Rickards uh, talking about BRICS currency. So this uh, article just recently came out, courtesy of Bondcrypt XRP. I saw it, uh, a couple people posted this on Twitter. Jim Rickards uh, in BRICS currency challenging U.S. dollar dominance. He says an important date to be watching, guys, later this summer, August the 22nd. And here's what he said, essentially, economist and currency wars author Jim Rickard shared his price prediction about proposed BRICS currency in an opinion piece published by the Daily Reckoning earlier this week. The leaders of the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa, are expected to discuss the proposed common currency at their next leader summit in August. Uh, on August 22nd, about two and a half months from today, the most significant development in international finance since 1971 will be unveiled, Rickards wrote. Elaborating, and guys, here is the quote. It involves the rollout of a major new currency that could weaken the role of the dollar in global payments and ultimately displace the US dollar as the leading payment currency and reserve currency. It could happen in just a few years. I don't think it's going to be one big bang, to be honest. Uh, I think this is going to happen over time. However, it could start as early as, uh, well, uh, late August, 20, uh, tw tw August 22nd. He's even pinpointing the date here. Continues by saying the process by which this will happen is unprecedented and the world is unprepared for this geopolitical shockwave. Rickards explain that uh, there are currently eight nations that have formally applied to join the economic bloc and 17 others that have expressed interest. So, uh, you know, we've talked about all those other countries that want to join the BRICS nations. Many other nations began to conclude that they could be the next if they ran afoul of the U.S. on certain issues. And that fear has greatly accelerated the push to opt out of the dollar system entirely. <laughs> so, you know, these countries are realizing, okay, there is a new system. We don't have to play by these rules. And so, well, maybe we'll join the BRICS nations as well. And we don't have to play by the U.S. rules. We don't have to be worried that the bully is going to get us and we can use our own currency. We can use our own system and we will be happy doing so. So, you know, it removes power from the US economy. Uh, unfortunately, for some reasons, fortunately for other reasons, but um, you know, it's it's not changing guys. DLT technology is going to be kind of like the ultimate band-aid for this, uh, you know, for this new emerging financial system. Also happen to see this guys from the Wrath of Kahneman. Important build out. Now he's putting some interesting facts together, connecting some dots guys. Remember last week when Ripple received the license from the MAS? Well, a week prior, Signum also received one. Uh, and Signum is connected to Ripple. AsianNet, an SBI 6 venture, received a provisional capital market service license too. And all these companies are connected. Uh, the timing is just MAS's calendar, but note these companies are all connected in various ways. SBI invested in Ripple and Signum, as we know. SBI did also partner with the 6 Exchange. 6 and Signum partnered with Custo Digit. Uh, 6 and Ripple invested in Keyrock. And Signum leverages Medico, which is now also a part of the Ripple umbrella of companies. So 
an interesting connection, also interesting, uh, Wrath of Kahneman, noting here that they've all received uh, their licenses, service licenses. Finally, SBI got a capital markets license there last year as well. And uh, as you guys can see here, he's referencing all those articles to that effect. So uh, some great research here, you know, finding more connections between a lot of these companies, Signum, Ripple, uh, SBI, Six Ventures, and a lot of those other companies that have been connected in some way, shape, or form. I believe that it is important for, uh, you know, Ripple to expand, to branch out, because, you know, the more utility, obviously, the more utility that we see on the XRPL, the better it is for them. But you can't just expect everybody to use the XRPL for everything. So, you know, it's going to be this relationship where, you know, we all uh, participate together to make the ecosystem great. But we still want to strive for the lion's share here. Yogi Bear underscore XRP also posting this. OK, guys, notice LIBOR ends on June the 30th. The four non-US dollar LIBOR benchmark rates, the British pound, Japanese yen, Swiss franc and euro, along with the one week and two month USD LIBOR are no longer published. Uh, the end of these rates is part of the final cessation of LIBOR and all remaining USD LIBOR rates will be discontinued after June the 30th. 2023. Now, he's bringing us this information here. I believe this is uh, directly from the uh, JP Morgan website. LIBOR is a short-term investment rate benchmark administered by ICE Benchmark Administration. If you guys did not know, I've done a few videos on this over the years. Uh, ICE term so for. Okay, this is what is going to be replacing LIBOR. We're launched on March the 16th, 2022, uh, which IBA made available on initial beta version of ICE term so for for information and testing purposes. The ICE term so for rates are designed to measure on a daily basis expected looking forward so for rates over one, three, uh, six, and 12 month uh, tenor periods. The rates are based on a waterfall methodology using eligible data for specified so for linked interest rates derivative products. Further details on the methodology are provided below. So um, there is a link here, guys, to the uh, to the website where he found all this information here. So essentially what they're saying is goodbye, LIBOR. Hello, so for. And this was even stated a year ago. We're going to be getting that new uh, standard coming in. And the video I did about this was uh, relating to Sandy O'Connor, as Ian here is also bringing up. And uh, I'll see if I can find that video. I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, it, it's, it's an older video, so it might be a little out of date. Nevertheless, guys, this is what we're finding out. Yogi Bear also added some additional information here. Tune in as LIBOR expert Matthew Schill offers exclusive insight on what to know when communicating a new reference rate and how DTCC's lens service can assist in the transition process. Just to give you guys a little bit more information on LIBOR, listen to this. Today, I would like to take a few moments and discuss the impact of the upcoming LIBOR cessation on both security issuers and the debt markets in the U.S. But first, by way of a bit of a background, the London Interbank Offered Rate, or LIBOR, benchmark has been the global standard for debt issuers to point towards to calculate their securities interest rates for the past several decades. A few years ago, the U.K.'s Financial Conduct Authority made a decision to cease publication of the LIBOR and requested that the market's perform an orderly transition onto alternative rates. Around this time, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and a committee they formed called the Alternative Reference Rates Committee, or the ARC, designed a secured overnight financing rate, or SOFR, as an alternative to the LIBOR benchmark. The SOFR is a transaction-based rate that directly reflects the daily U.S. Treasury markets and is much more representative of the value of securities that are indexed toward it than the LIBOR. With the cessation of publication of the USD LIBOR benchmark on June 30th, 2023, and the Fed recommending that security issuers transition to a term SOFR based rate, it is now critical that these issuers effectively communicate their fallback replacement rates to the market in a timely fashion. The question that has been posed to the industry is how this can be accomplished without disrupting the broader debt markets, which are estimated to be roughly $200 trillion. OK, so guys, the broader debt market, two hundred trillion dollars, you can see here they need to migrate from LIBOR to so forth. So how are they going to do it? This clip is only five minutes long. And, uh, you know, if you guys are interested in getting into the nitty gritty, uh, I will link this in the description of the video. Notice how they're mentioning DTCC. OK, I wanted to mention that because I think that is important and I'll get to that in a second. Chad Steengraber here pointed this out, OK, with regards to this original Yogi Bear XRP tweet. Let me paint a picture for you. They are transforming all LIBOR debt on June the 30th, the day before Fed now goes live. Coincidence? 
I don't know. When markets go haywire because the LIBOR transfer goes quote unquote wrong, guess what they'll say they have ready to save the system. Now, I guess, you know, all eyes are going to be on June the 30th to see if there's a hiccup, to see if, you know, there's a mishap. Um, and, you know, we'd be going into a long weekend. So it'd be very interesting to see what occurs at that point in time. Lucky for us guys, FedNow is being powered by Valente Technologies. And here's a clip from 2020 with an executive from Valente talking about their partnership with, well, I think you guessed it. Uh, uh, detail and depth in, in the particular products. And I know that there's a lot of new things that you're working on. Some things that you'd like to share with us. Sure. Uh, today, I think we have announced one more product, uh, which uh, uh, helps the latest technology, blockchain technologies, with these open ledger uh, technologies. We are already uh, it's just out for the last few months, I guess, uh, with one of the companies called uh, Ripple. And we have already partnered with them and we have a working product in which we have demoed it here. Uh, uh, and we are going to demo that to a lot of our customers as well. And we are getting a lot of good traction there saying uh, customers have looked at it and they're saying this is great because it's uh, when they're thinking about these things, when we show the solution, they really love it. You know, very interesting for me because, of course, uh, as you mentioned, blockchain is getting a lot of coverage. And I think a lot of people still associate it very much with Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. And that might not have given the, the right image of blockchain. So it's really refreshing to hear that uh, there's other applications in financial services and that uh, you, you've actually brought some of that into the market. I'd absolutely. like to hear a little bit more. I mean, you're absolutely right. Because... Uh, Blockchain has been associated with Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of people have not been looking at other things, but I think now uh, the knowledge of blockchain technology is becoming a little more popular and people are learning more on how it can be used, right from the securities market to the payments market, um, the settlements and all that. I think um, as we as we go forward, um, again, there will be a lot of uh, excitement regarding that and there will be a lot of new players and eventually there will be shakeup and then uh, some of the leading players will settle down as the leading leaders uh, and uh, by what we are trying to do is it really doesn't matter which vendor you go with, uh, which technologies we go with, we, our architecture itself is uh, built in such a way that uh, we are, I, I, I would like to use this uh, phrase called future proof, uh, which will support you as uh, the technologies change or industry change, but you'll be able to uh, address it very in a very agile fashion to address those needs as you go forward. So there you have it, guys. Valente Technologies is future-proof, and uh, it is going to be powering FedNow, which is going to finally be launched on July 1st, just in time for the LIBOR, so for rates to be switched June 30th. Let's also not forget another kind of sidebar here, that uh, on June the 29th, the 2023 MICA will come into effect in Europe. So I'm wondering if they are coordinating this guy strategically. Getting back to DTCC, okay, because this connects to LIBOR. I did a video a few months ago talking about this, giving you guys some more insight on DTCC and its connection there to Ripple. Listen to this. Gonna keep moving along because I also happen to see this, okay? DTCC, all the money tweeted out by Digital Perspectives here on Twitter. Check out the dates here. Now, for those of you guys who do not know what DTCC is, I know uh, probably a lot of you guys do already, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. Okay, and they have links with Ripple, okay? They're an American post-trade financial services company providing clearing and settlement services to the financial markets. Uh, they perform exchange of securities on behalf of buyers and sellers and functions as a central securities depository by providing central custody of securities. And guys, they are looking to go digital. I don't know if you remember a few months ago, uh, Digital Perspectives also posted this, uh, an R3 update. We're excited to share that DTCC selected R3's Corda as the underlying DLT for its Project Ion settlement platform, which is now live in a parallel production environment, processing over 100 transactions per day. Uh, you can read all about it here, and I will link this in the description of the video if you guys are interested. Also note here this figure, uh, this flowchart here from R3's document, figure one, some different ways to categorize your tokens. And you can see for wholesale fungible regulated and asset backed tokens you can see xrp does fall within the realm between fungible and wholesale tokens he also highlighted jpm coin down here so xrp part of this ecosystem r3 has the capability i mean it isn't exclusively xrp that settles with uh, with r3 however they do have the capability so r3 connected to dtcc and libor and so forth this is the standard, guys. Not to mention globally, we've got a sea change going on. This one from Matthew LANY. Shanghai Clearinghouse is now DLT enabled. What ledgers will be integrated? 
Well, look at what he pointed out here. Project R3's Corda are examples of private DLT systems that could be integrated now with the Shanghai Clearinghouse. So, I mean, you know, when we're looking at where was it? Jim Rickards saying BRICS nations are changing, moving away from the US dollar. The rest of the world is getting prepared for what is coming down the pipe. Fed now looking to launch on July 1st. And so does Chad Steingraber have a point here? If something goes wrong, will we have a system utilizing XRP to save the day? I don't know. Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.